Lock up your kids and hide your wife. Actually, wait a minute, they're on your own. Save your motorcycle! Some a-holes probably out there fondling it right now while you sit on the toilet watching this YouTube video. You probably forgot to set up your 10-foot electrified fence around your bike when you got to the office. That means that right now, some rando's probably sitting on it. As I say these words, spreading their gooch juice all over your seat. They're probably changing your lever free play or suspension settings too. Hell, your bike might not even be there when you get back. Actually, Actually, in reality, your bike's probably fine right now, but if you live in a major city like I do, bike theft is going through the roof. In Austin, in the month of April, there were 30 reported bike thefts in the downtown and domain areas alone. That's one per day, and of the motorcycles that were reported stolen, zero were reported recovered. Believe it or not, I had a bike stolen from me in May. Somebody was walking through my garage late at night and decided they wanted my Harley more than I do. Snapped the fork lock off, hotwired the ignition, and rode off into the night. Miraculously, we managed to recover it because this world-class intellect was riding around on my motorcycle a few miles from my apartment in the middle of the freaking day. But he did get away and is still at large. Now, I don't say this stuff to scare you, but as a warning that motorcycle theft is a very real problem, and if my experience is anything to go by, the cops just don't care. My case number still hasn't been filed, even now three months later. Hell, I got a better response time out of my friends who came to back me up when we recovered it than we did from the cops. So if you just got your shiny new motorcycle and you store it anywhere that a thief may have access to, and yes, they can get into your house garage, I've assembled a list of five steps that I personally use on my Harley, my KTM, and my DRZ to prevent theft, and I've also got some more sturdy options for those folks who want the next level of security. Now, I do have to caveat this list by saying that if a thief wants your motorcycle bad enough, there's nothing you can do to stop them. All you're doing is making your bike harder to steal than the other ones around you. Secondly, you don't need to use every single one of these things I've got on the list because it can be expensive, but I do believe the amount of money you spend on security is directly proportional to how much you actually want to keep your bike. Now, a rock form mount might not keep your bike safe, but it will cradle your phone gingerly on your motorcycle as if it were floating on a cloud made out of Jixer Boy tears from when you told them that their stretched 600 is not about to do 186 miles an hour on the freeway. They make phone cases for a variety of different kinds of phones, from those big-ass phablets you can't fit into your pocket to your baby's first smartphone that your parents bought you after you smashed your other phone's screen. See, now you should have been using a rock form all along. But now that you've learned that lesson, the case doesn't just keep your phone safe, it locks onto an aluminum handlebar mounted base so that you can see maps while you ride. Click that link below to pick up the last phone mount you'll ever buy and use the code YN25 for 25% off your order. Step one is observation. Make sure that you park your motorcycle in view of a camera, or at least in a garage that has cameras watching the ingress and egress points. This is gonna be one of those first things that a thief might look for, and if there's a bunch of different angles, at some point you'll get something identifiable from the footage. It helps if your parking spot is well lit too, so that passers-by can see if something looks off and report it. Don't count on cameras nor the intervention of a stranger though. It just helps make a bike in the dimly lit corner look a a little bit more tantalizing. One of my friends has assigned parking in their building and always parks their motorcycle in front of their car, which is equipped with a 1080p dash cam. That way, when they park the car, they can leave the dash cam rolling for a perfect view of what's going on with their bike. It won't work for everyone, but that's one way to have a high quality video feed of your bike that you don't have to have the cops subpoena for in the case of a theft. Step two is distraction. This one is more for those of you who live in big apartment complexes, but if you can, park with other motorcycles. Even if your bike is the nicest of the lot, if a thief has a lot to choose from, it decreases the odds that yours will be their pick. There's a lot of things that a thief looks for from how easy it is to hotwire the bike, to how quickly they can flip it, or how easily a cop can identify it. In the state of Texas, cops who run motorcycle plates get two pieces of information back in the computer. Make, and color. So if a thief wants to fly under the radar, they'll steal a plate for a common bike in a common color. For example, a black Harley, a red Honda, or a red Ducati. So if you park next to a bunch of other bikes, chances are they'll probably have a plate that matches one of those other motorcycles. I park my bikes next to a very expensive looking Harley Breakout and a police BMW K1600 among others. I also park them very close to one another so that there's not much room for a thief to work. 
Step three is discretion. If you own a big fancy Penegale with that sexy red bodywork, you're definitely going to catch more than the eyes of just jealous bikers and imaginary hotties. It's a rolling status symbol, and someone will 100% make a pass at stealing it sooner or later. Now, I'm not going to tell you not to buy a Penegale. Ride whatever you want, but if you do want to keep it, start putting your bike under a cover at night. Something that says GSXR will do nicely to scare off a would-be thief, because they're not going to lift the cover on what could likely be some stretched out and lowered 600. Also, nothing looks more suspicious than some dude walking through a garage late at night lifting up covers to take a peek at what's inside, so chances are they'll just move on to the Harley next door that's just sitting on the front lawn. If you want to take this to the next step, get a cover that has locking loops in it so you can run a long cable through, and then fix it to the wheels. That way, even if they look under the cover and like what they see, they'll need to bust out the bolt cutters to get the cover off. This is something I do when I know for a fact that I won't be riding my bikes for a while. Since I park them all together, I can keep an eye on them every day, but if I'm out of town, all of them go under a cover. Step 4, Immobilization. So maybe they made it past the cover and are trying to get your bike rolling. Well, there's a million choices for things that can keep the bike from moving, but I'll break down your best choices here. First up is a disc lock. The way this works is you run a pin through a big hunk of steel in your brake rotor, and that'll keep your motorcycle from moving more than one tire's rotation. A disc lock is the bare minimum level of security since a thief can just take the tire off the motorcycle or throw it in the back of a truck with the disc lock on there. However, for most nicer disc locks, they actually come with sirens on them that go off when they detect motion. Personally, I suggest a caliper mounted disc lock, which when locked prevents the tire from being removed and it doesn't allow the bike to roll even an inch. As a bonus, they can't be disassembled while they're locked in place. Sure, they could get through it with an angle grinder, but that's not exactly subtle. The next step up in immobilization is the chain lock. Now, I won't bore you with why I don't use cables. If you want the skinny on that, check out Fortnite's excellent video on the subject, but I went straight for a hardened steel chain. My choice weighs in at 20 pounds of steel that runs through the rear tire, swing arm, and frame, which means that if you wanted to steal one of my bikes with this on there, you'd either need the jaws of life or a battery-powered angle grinder and a lot of patience. Back in my dad mode days, I could fit the entire length of chain and the lock in my VFR's tail section if I took my tool roll out. But for most folks, I'd suggest adding a tail bag to the bike if you want to go this route, because trust me, riding with 20 pounds worth of chain in your backpack is not exactly conducive for long trips. The final step is securing that chain to the ground with an anchor bolted to the concrete. You'd have to own the space that you're parking in for this to be okay, that or have a very permissive or unobservant landlord. But if you bolt the anchor to the floor and then lock your bike to it, even the Hulk would throw his back out trying to lift it free. Things I don't recommend for immobilization are throttle locks, brake locks, or other handlebar mounted restriction devices. They can be bypassed in seconds simply by cutting your brake hose or just hitting it with the lockpick's best friend, an old upside down bottle of canned air. Those things are best used in conjunction with other devices, but if you already have a solid disc lock or a big ass chain, what's What's the point aside from making your bike more of an inconvenience for you to ride? Step 5 tracking. This one is a last resort for when all other safeguards have failed. Your thief is none other than Danny Ocean, and he and his band of gentlemen thieves have just gotten into motorcycling and they decided that all that money they got from robbing casinos is better spent on some elaborate setup to steal your motorcycle than actually buying one. They bribed the security guard, they seduced the landlady, they knocked out power to the city and airlifted your motorcycle out by helicopter, all in a daring midnight heist. You're left with nothing except a cell phone with an app telling you, and by extension the police, exactly where they're headed, how fast, and probably what they had for dinner, too. A tracking device is a must on any motorcycle, regardless of how old, how small, or how little you think someone might want to steal it. There's a lot of vehicle trackers out there, but not all of them are made small enough to be hidden on a motorcycle. I've heard a lot of people touting the benefits of those little tile trackers because they're small enough to hide almost anywhere, but those are for lost keys and wallets. You'd have to charge them constantly by jury-rigging some sort of battery charging system that will absolutely nuke your motorcycle's battery. If you're buying a tracker for your bike, buy an actual vehicle tracker and pay for the annual subscription. 
The reason to choose a vehicle specific one is that when you tie power to your battery it won't constantly drain it. They charge slowly and activate only when they sense motion. You do need to get a little clever when hiding the tracker though. You don't want the thief to spot it the second they pop the seat off. When I had my VFR I hid my tracker under one of the fairings near the front of the bike and I labeled the battery lead heated grips. That way even if a thief checked under the seat for a tracker all they'd see is a wire leading up under the gas tank and assume it was just because they were trying to steal a dad bike. Also, even if they figured out that it was a tracker on the bike, it would have taken them an hour to find it, since they have to pull all the plastics off and they might not even know what they're looking for. Spend the money here and get a nice one. Mine was under $100 with a year free and then an annual subscription, but I can track my bike down to the foot and I get an alert whenever it even senses motions. All my motorcycles have one. As a reminder, you don't need all of these, but some combination of these five steps will work for any motorcycle anywhere and foil all but the most careful and committed thief. Oh, didn't see you there. Why don't you watch this video right over here while you're at it? Because this one's over, actually. There's nothing left to see. But if you click this one right here, you could keep watching your sweet Papa Yam on video. Here, on the internet, on YouTube. Click the video. Do it.